Welcome to the Emotional Balance Sheet, the go-to podcast for parents with multiple kids, especially those with twins, triplets, or more, who are navigating the maze of modern family life and personal finance. Whether you're overwhelmed by education or retirement planning, parenting dilemmas, career transitions, or trying to define your purpose and plan, we're here to guide you with empathy, encouragement, and expertise. Hosted by Paul Fenner, founder of Tama Capital, a certified financial planner and parent to four kids, including a set of triplets. Our podcast is your ally in the quest for financial peace of mind, proving that money matters, but family comes first. Subscribe now and join our community of empowered parents at TamaCapital.com. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Tama may retain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. What does comprehensive financial planning even mean? At Tama Capital, it means a family office where lifestyle planning such as retirement, college, portfolio management, and tax prep and planning are all under one umbrella. But it goes beyond numbers. We focus as much on the emotional side of financial planning as we do on the financial side. We get you. We understand your challenges of building a family, business or career, and a healthy life. We are devoted to wealth planning for families like yours because we are you. Learn how our family can help your family by visiting TamaCapital.com. Hi, and welcome back. This week, I want to focus on the economy. Given that it's an election year, the economy is going to be even more front and center than it normally is. Obviously, there's other um, topics that that people are concerned about this year, whether it's uh, the abortion issues, whether it's um, border security. But let's face it, the economy always gets a lot of attention. And my good friend, Colin Roche, uh, recently wrote about, and he writes about this, I think, often, and I think it gets not enough uh, attention, that the U.S. government is not going bankrupt. The U.S. government has this huge advantage. It's called a printing press, and it can print money as much as it wants, just like it did during COVID when we saw fiscal um, stimulus, checks, uh, money to businesses, you name it. Now, there's obviously some downside to that, which we've now experienced for the last couple of years, which is higher inflation. But in the sense that you think that a individual household can go bankrupt, the US government cannot mainly for that sole purpose. When you think about a individual going bankrupt, that household, that family uh, can no longer pay its bills. It's insolvent. And so one of the things that Colin points out, and I'll put a link to his article in the show notes, is that debt isn't necessarily bad. We need assets and liabilities together. And if you look over the course of time, debt is usually growing, which isn't a bad thing. And I think what gets lost in that translation is how we utilize that debt, whether you're the government, a business, or an individual. So what I I think the, the one key factor that's missing in this is explaining productivity. And productivity is how we measure, one way how we measure how good we are with that debt. So if we're taking on a load of debt and we're not being productive with it, then that raises additional challenges. Just like in a business, if a business takes on a bunch of debt, but it's not productive to be able to repay those debts, you know, you're looking at a potential bankruptcy, no different than an individual. So debt in and of itself is not bad. It's how we utilize it and how productive it really is. And one of the things that Colin points out in his 
article that I think we need to really stress, and especially difficult times. We we've seen we went almost a ten year stretch without seeing any inflation to speak of. Maybe one two percent, not like the nine percent that we saw a few years ago or eighteen months ago um, during the height of this this peak inflation, if you will. And it's that we don't, especially those of us that are living or here in the States, how lucky we are and that we should all be thankful for what the US has built because we are the wealthiest economy in the history of mankind. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You know, as of 2024, the net worth of the US household sector is 145 trillion dollars. The US economy produces 30 trillion dollars of goods and services every year. It's estimated according to Colin that the government has total resources of over 150 trillion dollars. Not only is our entity of a government not going bankrupt, we have unfathomably wealth. And I think these headlines, as I was speaking with Neil Dutta a few weeks ago, when you see the headlines across Main Street media, doom and gloom sells. It's much, it's much smarter. People think it's much smarter to take a negative connotation or view than it is to take a positive one. I'm I'm still getting my arms around that one myself. But if you pull up any chart, I, I love this exercise. Sometimes I'll do it with, with new families I'm working with. I'll pull up a chart of the S&P 500 and I'll tell them, ask, what, what is your birthday? So my birthday is coming up, May 11th, uh, depending on when the show gets released. But when I look at the chart of the S&P 500 from the day I was born to today, obviously it's not a straight line up, but it's pretty darn close with some big corrections, but some big growth. And I think that optimism gets lost in the day-to-day headlines of what's going on in our world, in our society, um, in our in our local communities, because it's the old saying, if it bleeds, it leads. And we don't do enough, I think, digging into the data to really get the full picture of how well our economy is doing, even in the recessions. So I wanted to, I'll probably talk about the economy more uh, this year because it's election year, because that's what people are asking me about. Like, what's going to happen with the economy? Is inflation going to go down? And as we've seen inflation come down over the past, like I said, 18 months, it's still stubbornly higher than it had been. And that's one of our our problems as individuals and as society is that we get anchored, we get the anchor bias on numbers that had happened before. So again, we went from a, a about a 10-year stretch where where we had really limited or tame inflation. And then all of a sudden we see this huge spike and we're all still dealing with it. So that's a little bit of insight um, on the economy and where we're at today. Uh, thanks to my friend, Colin Roche. Like I mentioned, I will link to his, uh, his great article in the show notes. That's it for this week. Now that you've made it to the end of another great conversation, are you looking for more? If so, head over to TamaCapital.com where you will find all of our conversations. Use the search feature to find the topic or guest you would love to learn more about. Also, don't forget to make someone else's day by sharing our show. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.